Period, so which is really good, um, something we haven't had for a few years, and uh, it's in, meaning that up to about 15 knots, you can still fish 15 knots, trolling no problems at all, um, and the fishing is just incredible. So, the fish coming through, do you see anything? For, who went today? Actually, sorry by the way. Okay, who got any strikes today? A few of you did, yep, good. And who caught fish today? Caught a few of you converted. Well done, hey, good. And any marlin amongst those? Okay, good, well done. And any Spanish mackerel amongst those? Yeah, well done, good mate. And any dolphin fish amongst those? So we've got the whole trifecta. Any wahoo, who's the big one? Anyone get bitten off by wahoo today? Okay, I know a couple of customers that come in that did. <laughs> so they come and got more lures. Um, okay, so it's all happening. Oh, anyone get a yellow pin today? One of our customers got yellow pin today too, out the front. Okay. Just out with a spam crab, actually. Yeah, so um, it's it's all out there, guys. It's um, as I said in my report, I've, I've never seen in a long, long time we can catch sort of six species in one day if you hit, hit the lucky. It's more than a trifecta; it's a double trifecta. So it's unbelievable, and uh, there is a lot of in betweens. And the, and the unfortunate part is the weather seems to be the cycle. Of the weather is at the low bite point. Does that make sense? And the really good bite points is when it's blowing 35 knots like it was last weekend. So it's take the good with the bad at the moment. At least you're out there doing it, you know, and getting the odd fish. But if we can, if we can hopefully get mid next week after the new moon's gone and we can get that good bite cycle again, I think the weather's coming pretty good towards mid to end of next week. Um, that'll be the, the hot time. That's when we'll really see some fish come in. 
So, anyhow, well, tonight we'll show you all about it. Um, thanks for coming along. So, we're going to start off with a bit of mackerel trawling. So, Stewie's downstairs just spilled up a couple of rods and reels, which we didn't get a chance to do today. <laughs> a bit under the pump. Um, so, I'm going to start off with trawling for Spanish mackerel. So, give you a bit of a rundown on, on the fishing at the moment, guys. So, the Spanish mackerel have been... Uh, Oh, goodness, okay. Oh, okay, sorry. Spanish mackerel have been uh, phenomenal. So I just spoke to a customer yesterday because we get guys in every day that, that are either been up north fishing or they live up north and they're down here, whichever it may be. So we get intel all the time on what's happening. And um, I spoke to this gentleman yesterday who's from 1770 and uh, he just come back down, back down the coast now, come back from a trip up there last a month might have been early last week or mid last week. And, uh, but he said the Spanish mackerel from the headland out to nearly to the reef, they're just everywhere, like phenomenal numbers he's never seen before. And good size too, by the way. Um, so that means that's like, that's probably about a month and a half to two months before we even get that patch coming down here, okay? So you've just, it's just go, go, go. The problem we've got is the close um, bag limit season, uh, not bag limit, close season as in total no fishing. So does anyone not know about that? Does anyone know about that? So 1st of February is when it hooks in. The part that probably the fisheries didn't take into account was normally that, that's when it starts here, but this year it started very early in December. So we've got nearly no, I mean a month and a half left yet of um, solid fishing or good fishing. So that's why we brought this seminar early. We don't normally do this in, in December on mackerel. We normally do it in January, so hence what's early. Um, so if I was you guys, I'd be definitely <coughs> tuning into what we're talking about and, and giving it a crack. Does, did many people get uh, Spanish mackerel this year in amongst that bad weather? Anyone here get like, lots of fish at all? No? So you guys, okay. Uh, hopefully after this you will. <laughs> um, we, we, I think in Spanish I got around about, for the season, about 28, I think, or something like that. But I only fish probably, because um, the weather's atrocious, so maybe seven times or eight times. Um, and obviously bag limit six per, per trip, maximum in the boat. Um, so um, just remember that bag limit is still current until July. So it's actually, even while the season, they've got the new closed seasons, they still have the old existing bag limit until then. So it's, it will come in July, in effect July, it's one per person, two per boat, which obviously you all know is not, not great. Um, and plus you've got the closures in February and March. So, and if we get, and we get about, a, I think it's about a 10 day break in between the two uh, closures, they're three week closures. Um, and in that gap period, if we have normal, our normal 10 days of bad weather, then we've got like a two month closure because we just couldn't get out, right? So the fishing arms that would be absolutely fantastic if they haven't nicked off down south somewhere. So let's hope the bait hangs around during that period. Um, but um, in saying that, at the moment they're here, so they're ready here early and they'll only get better as they, each day goes on. Okay. So um, has anyone not caught a Spanish mackerel before? Has anyone here not caught a Spanish mackerel? Quite a few of you, right, okay. So um, my ideal scenario for you guys is trolling hard bodies. Um, don't, don't ask me why, but it's the same with marlin. So marlin, mackerel, even dolphin fish, um, at the start of the season it's all trolling hard bodies, lures or, cut or skirter lures. And then as the season progresses in, in those species, they seem to swing to live baits and bait, trolling baits and stuff like that. But the starts was, was on hard bodies. And you can troll baits down and catch fish, but I tend to get more on hard bodies first. Um, not a sales skill, it's actually true. <laughs> so just the way it is. Um, so a couple of my favorite, well, I've got a few favorite lures in hard bodies. I'll pass these around. And the ones that I've done well on for, for many years, um, probably the by far the cheapest and best value by far is like a Helco 190 Deep Laser Pro. Um, they're just like, like um, really, really good. Just a standard 190 like that. They do a crazy deep as well, which I've got here as well. The difference is in the bib. So traditionally our mackerel like to be down deep when they're on lures. So they like to be down that sort of six to eight meter depth. To do that, you need a lure that's got a, quite a big bib on it. If it's got a little bib, it won't go down very deep. It goes down about a metre, maybe. If it's got a, a fairly long bib on it, um, it'll get down reasonably deep, like maybe um, two to four metres. 
if it's got like a big spade bib on it and long, like a big bib, um, that'll just truck it right down to about six to 10 meters or even 12, okay? Uh, so this fellow here will get down in about two to four meters, depending on the line you're using and, and the um, distance behind the boat and the speed you go. If you go too fast, I'll blow out of the water and that do a big spiral as you're going too fast. The optimum speed the troller lures is around about six to seven knots for, for Spanish mackerel. And I'm gonna draw your position behind the boat where you place your lures, okay? Um, so this one here's a uh, very popular one. It's a, um, a um, King Brown, I think it's called, cool. a King Brown in the Laser Pro 190 Deep. Uh, these things, your price on these are about 20 bucks a pop. And they're really good. This is a Crazy Deep. So the Crazy Deep, called Crazy Deep, so it gets down a lot deeper, of course. Um, these guys dig it down, I find it down about six to eight metres. They do say they get down here. Um, six metres plus, they say. Um, and they say speed is three to nine knots. So the best speed is six to seven knots, okay? Um, and I'll show you, I said where to place them. So if you've got two or three different shaped bibs, right, you place the, the deepest, biggest bib the closest to your boat. And as the lures get a bit more shallower, they get out further at the back, okay? Remember that one, if you don't mind. Okay. <clears throat> this is your next, your next uh, level in depth. This one has a lot bigger bib. I know you can't see it in the back, I apologise guys, but you will get to see it. Um, this one has a lot bigger bib on it. So um, the bib on this fellow, will get, this will get down like eight to 12 metres, it says on here. Um, let's take the depth here somewhere. Eight to 10 metres, it says, but I've had them down about 12. Um, these are Samaki lure, these things kick butt. Okay, you all know Stuart works downstairs. That was by default, that was his colour we got last year and it smashed it. Okay, it's a coral trout one. And that colour accounted for many, 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 many mackerel caught off the Gold Coast. Um, I don't mind that slimy one though as well. Um, I'll pass those around. These are a little bit dearer, these fellows here, because they get 30 to the lures, because they come about 29 bucks to you guys. Um, but my go-to, one of my favourites, um, and I helped develop this lure many years ago at Tackle World, it's called a Strata Pro, that's that fellow there, okay? Um, they do a call for our colour too, but we've sold out this week already, and there's no stock available at the moment, so I'm waiting for them to get stock back in. Um, these fellows are just bang for buck are the best, okay? <coughs> a couple of reasons being, um, they come with uh, BKK hooks, they're really strong hooks. You don't need to change any of the hardware, okay? They are ridiculously sharp um, and they get down deep, deep, deep. So these guys um, are 12 metres every day of the week, 10 to 12 metres. Um, they track <coughs> really good at speed, they'll track at 8 to 10 knots if you have to go that fast, but 6 to 7 knots they're doing, they're down deep and they're really doing their job and they do a good range of colours. Fusilier is a good one too. There's many colours that are really good. And oh, sorry, I guess there was a price on us time, mate. Okay, so 33. So they ran about 20, 23 bucks. 22 bucks. Um, and then um, if you want to catch mackerel and wahoo, okay, so wahoo is a little bit different to mackerel trawling, again a little bit faster. So you up the ante to maybe eight to ten knots. A lot of these lures, like the Helcos and those guys, will blow out at that speed. They'll come, they're going too fast, and they get the wobble up, and then they start to go sideways, and then they flip out, and they bounce across the surface until you reset it all, okay? Um, but there are lures that are designed to go fast. Those things hang in at 10 knots without even thinking about it. And with that, you control things like Rapalas. Um, this is an extreme mag uh, wrap, and this fellow here will troll up to about 12 to 14 knots. And they'll go up to about 12 as well. Um, and these things obviously don't get down quite as deep. They will get down about four to six metres at that speed. And they, but you'll catch Spanish at that speed, not as many, but you'll definitely catch Wahoo at that speed. You don't get many, you don't get many Wahoo at eight knots, okay? Or six, oh, you will at eight knots, but not six, sorry. So any questions on that so far? You're all good? Okay. All of them, all of them six to seven knots? Yeah, all six to seven knots, mate, yeah. So at this time of year, I'd be, I'd be really focusing on that speed, 100%. Um, and then some people have, and all these, we're trawling on these on, um, I wouldn't trawl them on eight kilo line, I trawl them on probably 15 kilo minimum and braid 50 pound minimum, okay? Um, if you're running braid, you need to <coughs> run, you've got two options. Um, you've got, 
like a wind-on leader type scenario. I saw this one here. A little, like an 80 pound wind-on leader, which is like a length of leader six, <coughs> six metres long. And that one is um, 0.8 of a mil, so it's very thin. So it'll allow your lure to get down the track really nice. If you throw on a 100 pound with the deep diving lure, it will pull it up maybe about a metre, because of just the, just the, um, the line pressure through the water will pull it up a bit. Um, and I like to try a lot of time, I can't get them in one, I'll leave this on good ones anyhow, um, 60 pounds. So I'll tie my own 60 pound line straight to the lure. Uh, everyone says, well, you know, you should be using like wire traces or so, you know, um, which are here somewhere. Hey, yeah, sometimes I do use 60 pound wire trace, but only if I'm getting bitten off a lot by Wahoo. Only once did I resort to that this year, because one time I was out trawling with Jason, I think Stewie might be with us, and we done three lures in, in one spread of four lures. That was a bit off by school of Wahoo. There's a lot of Wahoo last year, or oh, this year, sorry, <laughs> earlier this year, and they're, they're really starting to show up now already. So um, they are, uh, are just in like uh, 30 to 50 metres. Yeah, mainly around that 40 metre mark. Um, so 60 pound mono is just a really good size um, to get that lure just doing its natural swimming thing really good. You put wire on there, it will stiffen up a little bit. It doesn't quite get the wriggle happening. Um, I use a loop knot on the front. I don't use a snap. I sometimes use a snap saw, but generally use a loop knot. Um, and as I said last year, I think I lost in total about, or this year, sorry, about six lures I lost in total for the season for, for that amount of fish that I caught, 28 Spanish. Um, but yeah, up to you guys what you want to put on your leader. Uh, but just remember, you will get l probably, I don't know the percentage, but maybe 30% less bites and your lures will get a bit, won't go down quite as deep with a wire trace on there, okay? But you will get to save your, your lures mostly, most of the time. But hey, Wahoo, like this, of those three lures we lost, two of them were bitten at the snap. They weren't even at the lure. So they bit us off at the snap swivel, okay? Rightio. Um, any questions on that so far? Okay, the next scenario is people that like to use um, like lighter lines, small outfits. So they might be trolling 20 to 30, so before I'm talking 30 pound and bigger, um, but some guys might like to use their eight or 10 or whatever kilo lines, or they might like to use um, 20 or 30 pound braid on a little light outfit, spin outfit. You can trawl with stuff like this, you know, that's um, a spin outfit like that, which you use for casting as well, but you can trawl with something like that as well. Um, and it might have 30 pound braid on it. So all you do is you just downsize, guys. Downsize something like, like those two fellows there. These are, um, uh, these are Nomad lures, the DTX minnows. Um, that little fella there on 30 pound braid or, or say 20 pound line, mono, will get down around about 10 metres. You know, same little lure gets right down in, in the zone. This fella here is similar, okay? Pass those around as well. Those colours, some of these colours coming out, guys, are just incredible. They're so lifelike. Um, so if you are going to, as I said before, if you're going to trawl light lines, please don't trawl those big lures because they'll probably work the line that hard that you may snap it or it just doesn't work quite right. Um, you still get big fish on these little lures. It just, it just matches the hatch better with your, your rods and your reels. Uh, any questions on that at all? So just downsize, okay? So uh, yeah, up, I'd say up to 140 mil would be the maximum I'd trawl in length of the lure uh, in, in line under 15 kilo, or 15 kilo and under. Um, that, that's in braid and mono, maybe 20 pound. When you go to 30 pound plus, uh, anything over, anything little is okay, and as well as big. Yep, okay. Um, Outfits, or so Stewie's bringing those up. How many guys here trawl with just a spin rod? Like, how many people just show hands trawl with like a spin rod? And with like a jig rod? Okay, so jig rods are fine for trawling. How many people have got like a, say, a Saragossa 8000 or a Saltus 4.5 or something like that? Any of you guys got that sort of stuff? On like a, say, a 20 to 50 pound spin rod? They're fine to trawl with. But in a jig type rod, even better. So say five foot six to six foot long, um, they trawl fantastic. But you have to put on around about 
six metres of that 60 pound lead or 80 pound leader. And you can still run your wire trace at the end of that or you snap that straight onto your lure or you tie a loop knot straight onto the front of the lure. Okay, does that all make sense? Yep, and you can run it off that. The drag on these little reels, like years ago, you couldn't do it, okay? Because those little lures, they pull a lot of line. They're probably pulling three kilos of drag swimming. So years ago, a reel this size, you do the drag right up, probably a pair of pliers, and it still keeps, <laughs> keep pulling out, okay? That, this little thing here, so it's one of the new, uh, Mer what are they called? Mary, <laughs> Maribel, I don't know where to say that. Uh, in Shimano, they're around about 260 bucks for that reel, or 240 bucks. But that um, has, I think it's around about 10 kilos of drag, which is like a Tiagra 30, okay? It's got a lot of drag. So you don't have to worry about the, the lure pulling the line off, doesn't happen. It's the rods going to bend a lot, okay? So the rods, again, the rods have got stronger because they've got lighter and stronger, but probably if I'm trawling that small lure, it's going to be bent, if you can see this. Um, actually, Graham, do you want to hold that one? Perfectly sitting there, buddy. Thanks, mate. So it's going to be bent about that and shaken like that with that little lure on there, okay? When you put one of those, if you put one of those big lures on this, say I had 30 pound, i actually say, say I had 40 pound braid on this, I may have a cracker put one of those bigger ones that went around on. It'll probably bend about there and be shaken like that when I'm trolling it, okay? That's how it'll be working. But it'll do it. Okay? Thanks, Graham. You've got to tighten up your drag. If it's slipping, it's too loose. If it's too tight, you get snapped off, it's too tight. Simple. <laughs> You've got to get that drag setting right. I, I like to just grab it. Like if you grab it and you pull it like that, it's that, that power, that's about the right setting. It's probably around about four to five kilos. Okay? It's a good setting. What's the lead? Oh, the leader, if I'm using um, braid, it's always about six metres. Like mono. mono, yeah, four to six metres. Most of your wind-on leaders are um, six metres that you buy, and that's a good length. Yeah, and on some reels, if you've got a chocolate block full of mono, especially it's a little one, and you put six metres of 80 pound on top, yeah. it's going to be like just barring off the top of it all the time, you know? It's going to be pain in the backside. Um, in that case, you don't want to rip off 100 metres of braid because that's a loss. I'd probably maybe go two and a half metres, just enough and maybe have it out of the rod the whole, t whole time, and not, not much on the spool. There's ways of getting around it. But you need something, because cause that rod's got plenty of give, something like that, even, even the jig stick. Um, a light jig stick here. No, I don't, but anyhow. <laughs> uh, is there one there? Oh, that's too light, that one, yeah. If you got a light jig stick, it still has a bit of give, right? And you've got to have that give for that lure to work the rod and the fish to take it down. Um, but yeah, all good. Just one thing I can say, guys, if you do use little spin reels, like 5,000 size, I wouldn't, I wouldn't troll under really five, four maybe, but um, you need to have 300 metres of braid, not 150. You'll get done. Okay, simple as that. Because they're first, you're trawling maybe up to 40 metres back, 50 metres maybe, and that first run, by the time you pull back not to neutral, you always never go back to neutral, go back to slow, um, you're you've just lost another, dumped another 80 metres probably, or 100. Um, and there's 150 already gone, you're down the backing. It's a little bit scary. So make sure you've got 300 metres of braid on, or 200 metres minimum, okay? Yep. Okay, good. Um, how many people have got bait runners, actually? I'll, I'll do this one too. Okay, so bait runners trawl all right as well. And most of your bait runners should theoretically have mono on them, not braid. Um, I do have braid in some of my bait runners, <laughs> uh, but generally I run, I run mono. Um, this is a lap, it's like actually good for marlin too, but, um, or snapper and mackerel and everything, but um, you can trawl with that as well. Okay. The drag on, on these is nowhere near as strong as that little reel, um, but it's still not too bad. I think it's around about six kilo. It's enough. Yeah. yeah, lots of times. Lots and lots and lots. Yeah, lots. <laughs> Sailfish, uh, lots of everything. We did a trip over to Romp and actually um, which is near in Malaysia, about, uh, that was about well, probably eight years ago now. And uh, when these bait runners first came out, it was actually the same size, they had eight, oh, that's a six. Sorry, it was a six, I had eight, which is the same size reel, just a slightly bigger head. And um, I don't, has anyone been to Rompen fishing for sailfish at all? If you ever get the chance and they'll do a bucket list thing, that's the place. 
Um, it's probably better than Carbo over in, in America. And um, we I fish with a couple of my mates, Tommy from Cairns up at Erskine and Cairns, Tuck World up there, and uh, and Rolly from X, uh, from uh, Tully, and uh, and they're two elderly gentlemen, and they're very slow at getting fish in, <laughs> but uh, but they've had a good time, and and every time we the next fish would be whoever it was you know fishing, and uh, we all use bait runners because these these had just come out, so it's a Shimano thing we did, and it was testing this reel out, and. Um, we caught, we hooked, I think, 56 fish for 14 hours of fishing, two days fishing, two days fishing. Yeah, sailfish, and I caught 22. I landed 22 out of 24, and those guys got sort of 16 each or something like that, 15 each. <laughs> they lost about the same amount. Why was it only kind of Because bait runners, the, when you wind it in, it comes in this way. When you, uh, when it runs free, it runs out back out here and sort of untwist itself, if that makes sense. But braid, for some reason, gets... And braid never twists, but it can twist on a bait runner, believe it or not, because it's it's a different effect. Don't ask me how it works, Graham. <laughs> I know, it sounds a bit confusing. I'm trying to baffle you here with bullshit, but no. It's a <laughs> no, but definitely, um, it's to do with the um, twisting, mate. So with a bait runner, how, if, does anyone know, not know what a bait runner is? Probably if you don't, I'll tell you. <laughs> so um, let's get untangle this first. So how it works is um, it's like a conventional type fishing reel, a normal fishing reel, right? I can't say conventional because in America that means overhead reel. Okay, it's like a normal fishing reel. And um, let's get this through here. One more time, I got it. Okay, so it's a normal reel. So when you wind it in, it just winds it in as, as a normal, as, and just winds it on. But when you are fishing with it, say you're um, bait fishing with it, for example, not that we're talking about baits tonight, but I'll quickly show you. You have a, a, a thing on the back here that disengages. This is actually designed by John Dunphy, who was the Shimano owner of you know, Shimano Australia um, up till recently, he passed away, unfortunately. But um, he designed this reel, and now it sells worldwide, of course, through Shimano. He sold the patent to Shimano. Um, so it, when you pull that lever back, so actually I'll show this first. You set your drag, right? So the drag's quite tight on there, okay? But when you pull the lever back, it disengages the spool and then you have a little tension device on the back here for the tension. So when I pull the lever back, it's, it's in free spool. So when you're bait fishing, you cast it out, you have your drag preset, but you put it in the rod holder and the snapper fishing, dewy fishing, mackerel's really good for mackerel. You have a live bait on there, you can have a pilly on there, whatever. The fish hits it, the fish bites it, they feel no resistance and they swim away with the, with the bait. And as it's swimming, I just got tangled, as it's swimming, um, you, it's going, 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 actually growing, if you just want, don't want to pull on that maybe. So the grains of fish, it's, it's going, 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 I just turn the handle and that's it. I'm, it's The hook just goes in and you've got it. And then it's back to its normal drag pressure again. Okay. And the idea of the thing on the, the tension on the back here is if you've got current and it stops it from sliding, you just keep going out, you just tighten up a little bit and it puts a bit of tension and makes that tighter. And now it's not quite as free. It's okay. different to just having free on the Yeah, so otherwise, you know, you know yourselves when you say snapper fishing or, or mackerel fishing, spot, spider mackerel, for example, which we'll talk about a bit later, um, you normally got to either leave the bar arm open and let it just keep running out or you've got to loosen the drag off. So if the fish hits it, it doesn't rip the rod out of the rod holder and it can take off, you know. Then you've got to grab it out, quickly tighten the drag back up again. <laughs> so it eliminates all that process. So you just pull that back. It's, it's in a free split, just turn the handle and it clicks it. Or you just push the lever forward, either or. It's like a dog on a chain running and can't go any further, you know. Yeah, thanks, Graham. But anyhow, you can troll with that. So if you've got this type of reel, you can troll, thanks, Graham. Didn't burn your hands, you know? You can trawl with that. So we're talking about trawling still. <laughs> yeah. So that's that one. Okay. So any questions on that on the trawling? So that's probably better than the trawling. How much uh, mono should you have on the mono uh, on the on the spin reel? Yeah. Uh, so it I'd fill up like it's different to say uh, an overhead where you might top shot it sort of thing. Uh generally with egg beaters. 
it's only the leader length that's the mono, or you have mono all the way. Yes. So bait runs normally mono all the way, but say it's that other reel, the Merival or, or a Saragossa 8000, whatever, uh, it's braid all the way, and then just a, a two or six meter lead on the end. Yeah, is that right? Um, okay, trawling your lures. So let's just say this is the boat. If you can all see this, sorry guys, if you can't. Okay, so I'm gonna place the, uh, the lures I really like, which are down the back there somewhere, the, the Strata Pro, the purple one that went around. I'm gonna play, it's the deep, that one and that Smarky is the two deepest, okay? So I'm gonna place that, that first one back about probably only 15 to 20 meters maybe, something in that bracket. And then I'm gonna place the, so that's the Strata Pro, and I'm going to place the um, the Samaki one about 25 meters back. Okay. Now these guys are going to they're going to go out that far. So you got to sort of know in your head if you got color line, you know you got whatever say five meters of leader on, and then as the colored line goes out, colored braid, so for example, you know that's 10, that's 20 meters every 10 meters. So Colour braids are really good for trawling, especially if you've got your mates put the lines out for you. And say drop it back three colours, you know. They look at you and say what, and it's going out, then you're in trouble. But hopefully they don't do that. <laughs> so you drop out that. When it hits, when you click it into gear, this fellow here is going to crank forward possibly around this area here, and this guy's going to sit around about here somewhere because it dives down, okay. So now you're... Um, your lines are only closer, like they're, they're, they're a lot closer. Your other lines, now I'm showing you where the where lures sit, but when you actually let the lines out, you let them out last. Does that make sense? Okay. So those ones are sitting in the rod holders that are square at the back of your boat, wherever it may be, on your gunnel. Um, the next ones, which are normally your rod holders on a bit of an angle, sort of out to the side a little bit. Uh, those ones there, those rods there, This one here is going to sit out a bit further than that one there, probably around about 35 metres back. And this one here is going to sit back around about maybe 45 metres back. If you go out too far, someone's going to come behind you and cut off your lines, all right? When we're trawling, talking these things later, you need to put them out a bit further, okay? Some, especially for dolphin fishing that. Um, so these guys here are going to wind up around about here and around about here. So your furthest one backs may be sitting theoretically about 35 metres at the waterline behind the boat at the most. So it's not too bad. Um, if you only run two rods, can yep. you run 35 or deep run? Yeah, of course. So I'd eliminate that and do it at those two lengths. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, correct. So the deepest one's going to be the most forward one. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> you got no more rod holders. <laughs> so um, when I troll my, out of my little tinny, thanks Stuart, when I troll out of my little tinny, I get my, my boys to sit, um, I got two rod holders like that, I get them to sit at the front, either side, with the rods out like that, which I hate holding because it's a bit hard on it. They become the side rod holders. But now I put rod holders up front in my tinny in that angle, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. I can take four out myself. Not that I want to do that. Um, of course so, mate. Yeah, one's better than none. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, but um, if you got one choice, it'd be the deepest look out of that pack that just went around, mate. And, um, and I'd be trawling that probably around 25 to 30 metres back. So uh, as you get more lures, they get a bit closer because you don't want to go back much further, guys. So yeah. Really yeah, rocket launch is okay, but on deep divers, they're really hard to get out, mate, when you hook up a fish um, because they're down deeper. When the fish is on the top, a particular mile or something, you can, you can actually sort of wiggle it out and get it out because it's, it's up there. But when it's down there, it's extra. I don't know if you've tried it yet, but it's really hard. Yeah, line angle just kills you. Yeah, line it's angle hard, kills you. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, this is Stuart, too, by the way, if you don't know Stuart. <laughs> um, but um, have you, we sell a lot of these guys. You know that, do you know the roller, tro oh, the flat troller rod angle things, the roll, rod roll? Rod rigger. Rod rigger, they call it. It's like a tube like that with another tube like that on it. 
okay? And it sits into like any square, particularly square rod holder, but we do have 30 degree ones what we mainly sell up the front here somewhere and allows that to go like that and then your rod sits out like that, okay? And then your line's a lot further away from these other two lines. So imagine that like that. It's, it's a lot better trawling. So you, you never tangle up hardly at all because you've just gained another the, the rod length, so another five or six feet of boat width, so to speak, each side. So you gain another three or four metres of width. So if you've a little tinny, they're really good. If you've got a big boat that's got that's six or eight metres and got 2.5 beam, you probably don't need it. Okay? But when you've only got 1.8 or 1.7, you, you maybe need it. At least one. Um, so they're really good, but getting back to what you were saying before the gentleman, the uh, rod holder, the angle, um, these are even quite hard to get out. So, and they're just on the side, because the depth was sort of saying the deep hard, diving, yeah. it, it's just hard to get them out. So, and you've got you, to kind of reach out as well, it, like you're hanging over the boat a bit. Yeah. yeah. You sort of got to run those, anything that's um, up high or, or on an angle wide, you've got to run lighter drags on. Not just enough that it doesn't slip off when you're trawling it. But when you hook a fish up, it's easy to get out because when it's tight, the drag's tight and it's tight, it's really hard to get it out of the, out of the, anything. Yeah. Does that wrap how that high speed troll again? Yes. And that was even harder with my fish on it. Yeah, that's right. Just a lure on it, right? <laughs> You're fighting the lure. That's right. Yeah. And that's another reason why we don't put our lures out real long when they're deep divers because you spend more time in the day fighting the lure back to the boat to check it than what you do catching the fish. When it's close, it's not too bad. And if I can recommend something, if you need to check something when the line's not quite right or whatever, you have to slow down for your mate because he's fighting that lure of you doing six knots. Like, he'll be stuffed when he find hooks a fish up because <laughs> he's just fought the lure for the last 10 minutes to get into the boat. And also, as you know, when you get the boat, when you get the lure close to the boat and it's, it's down deep, it's doing that, and you're doing six knots, it can shoot out and get you in the head somewhere. Okay. Any questions on that at all? Oh, last thing. When you when you're driving, a couple of little quick pointers. When you're driving, try and we don't. I don't have autopilot in my boat. If you've got autopilot, that's good. But if you don't, you have a tendency sometimes to talk to your mate. You might fall asleep a bit, and you feed that way, and and you get your bearings back again, and you're looking, where am I? And actually, you you just done a full loop, and you're running over your lines again. <laughs> so you've got to. Try and keep your concentration on a straight line. If you do turn, do a quite a decent arc. Don't just say, oh, there's fish back there, you just run, run over in this full lock, because you may run over your lines again. All the lines will just end up being really close to each other when they pull it back out again, when the boat straightens up the other way, um, there may be a chance you get tangled. Okay. So which one would you say drop out first? Ah, the, uh, the long one. Yeah, so the shallower, longer one. They go out first. Correct. And then drop out deep in. Correct. Yep, yep, because it's harder getting the deep diver through the through the line spread yeah. in close, believe it or not, than what it is. Uh, sorry, yeah, harder like to get your longer ones out amongst the deep divers. Yeah, it's like you're putting it out through yeah. a, a, um, a minefield, minefield <laughs> in the right. process. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Do you get rid of the Yeah, that's a good question too, mate. So, yeah, I, you know, in. All the little fish I've done, I've probably maybe lost a couple of fish where the rings actually come off and it's got the ring on the end of the, on the end there, you know. Um, if a lure has a split ring on the top, which a lot of them don't do anymore, but they used to have, every lure used to have a split ring on the, on the, on the loop, um, I would totally um, get rid of it. A way to eliminate that is you actually do, you can, if you want to leave it on there, you can, and it's, some of them have a really tight little eyelet, so you actually need to leave it on there, right? So you put a solid ring onto your split ring. And then it never ever comes off. Does that make sense? So solid rings are cheap and they're strong, and they make the loop actually even swim better. Yep. Because then you don't need a little loop. Not used to a, a uni knot straight to the to the solid ring. Works good. Yeah. So um, that's a good question too. Snap-ons are great, but on hard bodies, because yeah, you know, when controlling this sort of thing, there's no like they, they swim in and out and they shake a little bit, but Hard bodies are aggressive on tackle, okay? They work hard. And if you're ever going to break a snap, like you're saying in that little V part, 
it's from the hard body just doing this so much and actually a lot of time if you look at your snap it's got it's worn all the pain off and it's like down to the brass you know it's and that's only one day's trolling so yeah it, it is a it is a, per, a personal thing whether you would have leave it on there or not but as i was saying i, I tie loop knots and occasionally i'll, I'll use a snap uh, but not not as much not in hard bodies and a loop knot if you don't know how to do a loop knot it's a really easy knot um, it's, 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 sorry, mate. By yourself, and you hook a fish. Mm. Do you try to get out all the other lures? Yeah, so um, that's a good question too. If uh, if you're going through a school of fish, if you don't, by the time you get the rod out, if one of the other ones hasn't taken off, it's probably not going to take off. So then, you, yeah, you want to, if you hook the fish in close, it's always a drama because they're going to go somewhere where the other ones are. If you hook on one of your two, those two longer ones, I'd maybe leave the other ones out a bit longer. How's that sound? Yep. So, because there's a chance you may get a, a fish on. Um, and sometimes when you get a fish on, a lot of times he's got his mate swim with him. What's going on, you know? And if he sees another lure, he's, he's maybe going to grab it. So that's when you get the double or triple hook up. Um, but yeah, but if it's the first close in lure that gets hooked up and he's going to run straight between all the rods, you're better off at that time. You get the other ones in. If you got uh, if you get enough bodies on board, you probably get them in. Yeah. But so many times over, over time, um, when I especially been on, on my own, I like to fish on my own, just a bit of serenity thing. Uh, but <laughs> occasionally. Um, but sometimes I don't do it. But um, but uh, yeah. So what happens is um, I, I quite often I try and steer my fish a lot. I, I use I steer the fish that side, away from that side of my other, I might just have two rods that control my own, or maybe three, two. Um, and um, I'll be doing just one knot. I'm just, so when you hook a fish up, guys, they go ring, 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 and they're taking off, right? Or one's taking off. Um, you slowly pull it back down before you even turn around and grab that right out of the rod holder. So pull it back to about one or two knots, still going forward. If you get the chance to even turn it, if you get this blown 15 knots of wind, try and turn it, around into the wind while it's still running. So you're fighting it downwind and the boat's gonna always go that way with the wind, okay? When you try to go forward and you're on your own and you still wanna go forward into the wind, it always turns around and goes back the other way and it's been run over your line or run over whatever. It's painful. So you, the first thing you have to do to think is when it's going rah, 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 is okay, it's, and it's, and if it's rough, it's not rough, you don't need to worry about it. But if it's rough and it's windy, you need to slowly turn the boat away from the way you're heading to, uh, to enable it to sort of self-correct into the, with the wind. Then you get the right of the rod holder. Well, it's all within about five seconds, but if you can do that, you're, you're on a winner. Um, so getting back to what you're saying, yes, um, in that case, I might leave the other lure out. And what I was going to, about to say is many, many, many times I've done that, and I'm only doing one or two knots, and I've left the other lure out the back there somewhere, and I'm steering the fish over that side. Um, that lure that was just, just swimming like that is going, rawr, rawr, I've got to put another one on. So they do hit it one or two knots, and I've had it many, many times happen. I asked him because they yeah. have a big trouble, lost three, like, Ke with the baits. Yeah. They got a close line, and, and it's just this. They all hooked up together? No, they not at the same time, or yeah. it's like three different. Times. Yeah, so, okay. Um, that becomes a case of which rod do I grab. So when you're trawling as well, you, you don't really know which one's which one to grab if you've got a double hookup in on your own or, or you've got two guys to get a triple hookup, which rods do you grab, you know? And a lot of time you grab the wrong one, it might be too big a fish. The other guy would have been easy to get in, but that's just the luck of the game, you know? You can't really tell that one's going, it's a bigger fish, not a smaller fish, <laughs> you try to listen. Um, but it's quite hard, yeah. Just luck. But many, I think this time, especially Jason, we had a few triple hookups yeah. and, uh, and got all the fish in. Yeah. Lucky. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I bought some gear and um, that, like the tr coral trout one. Can I, yes. Can I bring like, the rod in and that you can tie it for me? I'm yeah, 100 percent Yeah, if you guys are unsure how to do it, just pop in. Maybe, just maybe not the next couple of days, but <laughs> we're a bit busy. But um yeah, 100 percent mate. Anytime. Yeah, the leaders onto that coral trout, one of the other things for us, but I just as you said, don't use the swivel in case yep. you get the bubble line across there. Yeah, that's right. That's the other reason uh, again don't maybe not snaps. You get as I said last year, the few times I got bitten off is because we had snaps on. And I'd bitten off above the lure. Yeah. 
Yep. So I don't know how a, a, a hard body swimming doesn't um, make much bubbles, but they don't. If you watch them, they just you just see the lures swimming. You hardly see any bubbles like you do with a with a skirt lure. But, but you put but you put a, a snap on, you see a bubble trail hanging off the back in front of the lure. So which is what they they eat, obviously, especially wahoo. Okay. okay. Any questions? Is this the trawling nearly done? Are you all happy? Six to seven knots. Okay, our teas with hard bodies. Okay, yeah. te uh, with hard bodies. Uh, so, uh, sorry, guys, the gentleman in the back. I think you're about to go into the loop knot. Oh, was well, yeah, the loop knot. Yeah, it's <laughs> sorry, sorry, buddy. Loop knot. Okay, I, I was then I'll talk about that one, Graham. So all you do um, to tie it onto your lures, you just tie like a, a granny's knot. You know, like like you go through, make a, a knot, right? It's a granny's knot, just like. Um, I'm going to show you here, now you can't sit in the back, but you just tie a granny's knot, just a granny's knot like that, right? Which is like that sort of thing. And then what you do is this is the um, the ring on the, whatever it is on the front of the, of the bib here. And what you do is you go through the, through that um, eyelet, or through that ring there and back out. And then you go back through the hole and then go around, uh, we can twist it around once or twice or whatever, um, and then go back through that first loop. But what you gotta do is this, this uh, loop here shouldn't be any bigger than a five cent piece or it will make bubbles, Charles. So you wanna keep it about half the size of a five cent piece or around the size of a five cent piece. I see some guys have got it you know, this big, like that big, it's too big. Okay, it's got to be small. Not, not so much that big, but better. Yeah, <laughs> fingernail size, fingernail size, okay. What's that called? Uh, perfection loop. Is there any other names? No. Lefty's loop. Yeah, lefty's lefty, loop. Yeah, lefty's yeah. loop as well. Lefty's loop, perfection That one's loop. far from perfection. Looks better in person. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it does, yeah. Up. Actually, Stu, if you just want to tie one onto, onto any, any, any lure there, that'll do, yeah. You can play with that and pass that around. Maybe. Have a look as this comes around, and we'll see how big Stewie's loop is, by the way. Uh, yeah, it'll come around. Um, so Graham is just saying, do we troll, and it's a good question, do we troll teasers with hard bodies? I don't. It's up to you guys, okay? Um, it gets in the way. The lures are diving down. They're not on the top just doing where you can see them. They're down there somewhere, and that's down there somewhere too sometimes. Um, so my suggestion would be no, I don't do it. Uh, there are some guys that do it, and they're mainly using a witch doctor rather than a, a, a daisy chain or a strip tease or something like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, guys, for a sec. Top hmm. Yeah. So, not scissors. Um, yeah. So. Um, so yeah, that's about probably I can tell you it. I need to tell you where to go though. So where do you go trawling? Um, okay, off the Gold Coast here, um, Mermaid Reef and Palmy Reef are both great spots to trawl. Uh, look hard body this time of the year. Gravel patch, probably better, okay? More Spanish out there, better, better. Um, definitely um, your normal Diamond Reef, your 17 Fathoms Focus Reef. Um, you've got marks on that sheet there and um, when you put them all in, you'll see where they are. Okay. Are you far yeah. No, seventeen fathom. I, I, I trawl on twelve fathom reef, which is this bait reef off Sea World. There, it's three k's from the Sea World. That two k. East. Uh, southeast. Yeah. Yep. And seventeen fathoms, which is the pinnacles off Southport, is three k from the Sea World straight out, sort of thing. It's about thirty-two meters deep. That's a good spot too. Uh, and probably this time of year is probably the spot actually. Yeah. So the mackerel are where the bait is. You need to find the bait and the mackerel will be stacked. Uh, when you see mackerel on a sounder, that's your, that's your sounder screen. Um, the mackerel, this is your bottom, comes along like this. You might have a bit of a pinnacle like that coming up. Come back down again. And there may be bait here like that, above it, that sort of thing. Um, and the mackerel will be just lines, they're just like lines, and they'll be sitting here like this. 
like that. Just like straight lines. Or just a slight curve, but not much. Um, you know, and when you're, when you're sitting still at anchor, the line will be quite continuous like, like that sort of thing, you know? Yeah. So that's how it looks. Do lessons on doing sounders too? Uh, we don't yet. We try and do the basic GPS sounders when we do when we do this. We haven't done one yet. I've got this 3D thing with radar and it wouldn't have, like, it's got Netflix on it. <laughs> you know, you'd never get bored, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, this is what it really annoys me. When you buy real rod off us, we, and we used to sell Lawrence and Simrad years ago, Lawrence and Eagle Eye back in the day, and Humbird. And we spent, we showed the guys when we used to sell it for go to woe how to use it. So you guys, just, you know, no one ever come back and said, I don't know how to use it. These days, everyone sells it. They just, Chuck it in your boat and see ya. Yeah. When we sell a rod and reel, we tell you everything about it. I don't know why the service is crap. Yep. It's just saying. No. Sorry, guys. <laughs> there is a yeah. Dave, Dave White yeah, Dave White does it, and um, there used to be uh, guys to work with um, TM. Cool. Yeah. 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 Mm. But it doesn't matter. The guys who sell you the sounders and GPS should be teaching you guys. Should be part of the parcel. Mm. Yeah. Doesn't. No one cares about service these days except for us. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Navionics? Uh, Navionics app, 100% on your phone. You guys should have, a, everyone you guys should have Navionics app on your phone. It's like your Bible for fishing. Sorry. It's, it is a sounder question, a quick one, mate. Yes. That's all right. I'm new to using sounders and fishing. Yes. I've got it just slow drifting and stuff, but I found when I'm trolling and going up in that trolling speed, I'm getting a, a lot of grain. Okay, if you get a lot of grain, could be, probably your transducer's not in the right position. Is it through the, over the back or through the floor? In the back. Yeah, over, the, over the back? Yeah. Like yeah, hanging over the back, sort of? Yeah. Like on the transom. Yeah, so, so yeah, the, 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 the main thing is when you, when you mount your transducer, I believe, I've never used, Stuart is a marine mechanic by trade and does a lot of boat fitting. Fitted so a few transducers, knows, yeah. Knows, so. the, the biggest thing is a lot of them are always mounted too high or too low. So too low is going to throw like the massive rooster tail off the back and you might see a few boats go past it. Well, if it's it too does. high, you get grain and stuff like that. But if you drift, like just if I'm yeah. looking for snapper, the snapper, it's plastic, all good. Clear as day. Yeah, it's because yeah. there's no air pocket underneath the transducer. So as you move, the water leaves the back of the boat yep. and it gets a little air pocket underneath. You can't well, read through it. When I am travelling home and I'm yep. doing the speed, it is kind of spraying up a little bit, so that's more than likely down. Yeah, it could, no, it could be down a little bit much. It could be in your settings as well. But nine times out of ten, I always say get the placement so right first the, and then go from that. The yeah. trick, the Try trick. doing it in the brawl water because it's flat yeah. and you won't get that like pop out of swell or anything like that. So it's a true test. Okay. And then Try once it's good there, it's, yeah. Yeah, if, you're, if your transducer is mounted and it's sitting like, like that, like their sort of position, um, where you've got sort of one end just sticking out a little bit below the boat and the rest is not, you're going to get bubbles like crazy, okay? So you need to have your transducer bracket mounted so it's nearly level upon the boat so you get all, because they've got play of about 30 mil, mm. up and yeah, down. Travel, yeah, travel, so yeah, like the, a little slide. You want to like lift up and down. Actually, so I take back just a little bit above the bottom, but you want to be able to that 30 mil be able to drop it down to below the bottom if you can. So. I find if you have the top of that, that the, looking at the transducer back on this way, and this year, little bolt goes through up here, that, that uh, corner there, that corner there, should be just level at the bottom of the boat, and I like the rest actually fully clear. Does that make sense? That's what I, I don't know about used to, that's what I find it's the best position. You get a little bit of a rooster tra uh, spray off the back, but you get a lot less bubbles. And it never drops out that eight knots or six knots. It's fully clear. Brand of sound is another thing too. Like um, I normally use Sim. I like a Simrad. I normally run Simrad, and um, and I'm now I, the new boat or the second hand boat I've got it's got Lorantz in it, meant to be uh, the bigger one, so it should be theoretically better. It doesn't read really no one does my Simrad. No. My Simrad was yeah. crystal clear, and in, when we're doing in my mate's boats, they got Simrads. It doesn't matter if we're out. 400 metres deep doing 20 knots, it's like looking at, at a TV screen, it's beautiful. 
you know, but other brands, not as good. What do you think of Rain Marine? <laughs> <laughs> they, they do a lot of things. They have a lot of functions. They have a lot of functions. No, look, they're okay, but I think at Rain Marine, again, um, they were not so good there for a while ago, but I think the newer ones are not too bad, maybe. Is it very old? I, no, it should be fairly good then. Yeah, the newer ones are not too bad. Yeah, well, this is the problem we're talking about. You know, yeah. There's a whole other night we'll probably yeah. do. We should probably do a sound night, maybe. Sorry, sorry. No, that's all right. Yeah, I'll get back to fishing. The biggest <laughs> so, thing is, I think they're all pretty good now. Like, yeah. they've all got to be rival with against each other. So they're pretty good. Yeah. you just got to learn how to use yours. Yeah. Yeah. Every, like, you got surface every zone, you got gain, and yeah. sometimes you've got to take off auto and you actually use your own discrepancy on power. Yeah. And gain and yeah. SSC, service cloud, and that sort of stuff. SSC, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There. <laughs> so yeah. It's only going to play around with what Stu is saying, and yeah. maybe we might do a sound like one night, but you're going to have a flurry of different questions getting asked. But you probably get it all together. <laughs> <laughs> That's still like, enjoyable, though. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's it, but I just want to show you about trawling an area. Okay, so you've got to get a trawling pattern happening for mackerel. And this is actually the same for many fish, but mackerel in particular, sometimes they'll only bite in one direction. That's actually a lot of the time, more than half I'd say, in one direction. So you can go over them that way, they don't want to know about you. And you might be trawling along and go across to that reef over there, and go over it, you see the mackerel there, but you don't get a strike, and you think, oh, well, they're not biting. That's not the case. They are biting, you're just going the wrong way. So you've got to do loops on each time you see a mackerel. Don't just go over it and keep going, it's a bite, you can get a strike. So we actually do, well, my, if you look at my, my plot trails, it's like that, and then you see like this, and then obviously I hook up, then I then you see more of this, I go the right way then all the time. Um, or, uh, I might I normally do two loops, two two loops across that area, and I'll go that way. Then I'll turn around and come back the other way, you know, or I'll go north, south instead of east, west, or whatever it might be. I work out how they're feeding in that area. They're facing the current, whichever way it might be. You've got to work that out. It's really important. So on your GPS, oh, this is terrible color. Sorry, oh, really dark ones today. So I'm going to get some dark pens, guys. So anyhow, um, if this is your plotter trail, and say I've got um, a little fish here, and I've got number 20 here, and I've got another one in wherever it might be, 25 there, and this might be one kilometre, right? And on this spot here, I know there's a pinnacle comes up on my sounder, and um, I might be going down this way, my, my goal is the head down here. I'm heading from that's north and that's south. I'm just going down with the with the current. The current's going south. So what I'll do, I'll come along and I'll trawl my line over here. And I'll probably do, because it's only like a K for three, I'll do the run down over the three. I won't do the loop on the top, even though I saw fish there. Right? And I'll do a run across here, across there. There's no fish happening there. So next run, I'm not going to go back that way. I'll come down to here. Oh, there's fish there but I've got no, no hits. So what I'll do, I'll do a big loop around, I'll come back, and I'll go directly over the fish this way. And if I get a hit, I'm thinking, okay, why did they not hit that way, but they hit that way? So, and for my normal thinking is that's, okay, that's the way they're feeding today. And then I'll get that fish in, I'll, and the, the current's going that way, the wind's blowing from the north, and I'll hook that fish up, I'll swing it a bit back this way, and I'll, fly, I'll drift down the current and I'll get the fish on into the boat and then I'll put my lines back out again. I'll, before I put my lines back out again, I'm going to come back around this way so my boat's straight. So many times I've been with friends over the boat, they get the fish in and we're down away from the spot and I'll just throw the lures out the back. And, but then they turn straight away to go back up to where they were and the lines are someone's still let the line out and it's gone across the other lines and you've got to be in a straight line before you let your lures back out again. Okay, really important. Again, you drop the two long ones out first and you drop the two short ones out. 
and I'm going to go back over this way again. Same, same run, or similar run. I'm going to just go further. Up. Whatever. Um, if I don't get a hit, then I may, before I go up to this one here, I'm not going to go back there. I may just do a run that way. And then if I don't get anything, I might turn around, speak, turn around, and come back this way. And then just to finish it off, <laughs> this will be the last, because I've got two fish off there, right? I'll come back around and I'll do one more run that way over it. To me, I'll, if I get a third one, then I'll just do the whole pattern again. That's how I do it. Um, and then if I didn't get a fish on that first run over there, and none of this happened, no, no bite going that way, I'll go up to this spot here and I'll try to do exactly the same there. I'll go over it and I might get a hit on that, run, on that direction again. Because uh, And if I come back down, I don't get a bite that way. It, it definitely means they're not biting that way, but they're only biting that way. Four-leaf clover. Like that. Yeah, like a four-leaf clover. You've got to study. That's right. You've got to dial it in. Does it matter if it's light or dark? Or... Yeah, so no, not at all. Um, I've caught many Spanish mackerel. Um, fishing's around one time I get up early. So I go fishing most times. <laughs> and uh, and if we'll, yeah, we'll trawl in the dark, 100%. It's a little bit hard letting your lines out, but if you've got coloured lines, it's not too bad. Yeah and just drop them out and it, it'll be cracking daylight. I don't get the dark, dark. Yeah, yeah. But um, my first morning's good. Sorry? First morning. Yeah, first morning. Yeah. So like, you, you should have lures out at quarter past four this time of year, to be honest with you. It's a big dark day. Colours. Dark Diving colours? Dark. Oh, dark colours? No, that's a good question. The silhouette, night time, da, da, da. Um, you, like, I never really probably trawled in the dark, say, at 3.30 in the morning. It's always been just cracking light. Um, doesn't, no, just normal colour, like my normal colours. Yeah. Stewie likes to run his coral trout one out of fair way, but I'm always getting up in because it's a deep dive and I say it should be closer. Anyhow. Always works. <laughs> <laughs> so that takes away my thing of saying deep dive is that in closer, you know. Anyhow, whatever. Does that all make sense, guys? Yep, cool. So we see you doing donuts, so I know you've got a strike. I'm going to watch what you guys are doing. Okay, um, I think that's about it. That, that's about it in the trawling because we, we, we're we're chewing up time. Um, so we'll now move on to uh, casting lures. So casting. Oh, sorry, Johnny, you got a question, mate? Oh, Dave, sorry, Dave. Yeah, trawling. Yeah, so I've done a fair bit of trawling up around the four beacons there, up in the sand hills. Is that what you're talking that area? Oh, the trolling boards. Okay, I haven't done much of that. So you're talking like spotties, like school mackerel and stuff, mate. Eh? Yeah. So what I know is that the troll boards they run their line a long way back from the troll board, right? Like 12 meters or something like that. It's not just in front of the lure, is it? It's a long way, long way back, as far as I know. Do you know how just? No, I thought it was pretty close. No, it's not. No, it's quite a long way back, as far how as. How do they know. wind it to ten bar? Don't know. The hand line, then. I don't know. Hand line, don't you? Yeah, that's right. The hand line. No, oh, serious, I do. Yeah. I'd run it pretty quiet. So oh, that's what the way I'd normally do. Yeah. This is actually a troll. So what a trolling board is, guys, it gets your lure down really deep. So a lot of time the, the fish doesn't want a lure with a big bib stick at the front of it. It doesn't maybe quite look right, especially small like school mackerel and spotted mackerel. So what they do is they use a, 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 like a, a diving device that sits up the line, maybe 10 metres in front of it or 15 metres, whatever, 12 metres. And um, it pulls the, that and you use a little lure like something that, a metal yeah, like a little spinner, spoon, or spoon like whatever, has not catch a spanish. Well, you may catch a spanish on that, but you definitely catch spotties on it. Okay. That's a stewy size lure. Yeah. Do, the problem is with that, you just got to use really light gear to cast it. You do. It. Yeah. You struggle throwing something <coughs> like under 15 grams on 30 pound, even the real thin stuff. But. Yeah, although we, we are so lucky these days, guys. Like the technology coming out in fishing gear is just like everything else in, in this world. And uh, braid now, as I say all the time, braid's so thin, the reels that are so small are so strong, you don't need a big heavy rod anymore. It's finished, it's gone. And even guys that go up the reef chasing big doggies and stuff like that, big GTs, everything's downsized now. What was a 20,000 reel Saragossa or Stella or whatever? We hardly sell them now. It's all eight and 10,000, because they're still getting 400 meters of 90 pound braid on there. Uh, but the line's half the thickness what it used to be. So they're getting the capacity. The drag on those size reels used to be eight or ten. Do like a pendulum cast, like Stuart's saying. 
try and get away with about a metre and a half, okay, but not little casting. I don't know, used to it, do you? No, nah, it's always pretty yeah. short, hey? Mm. Yeah, and I think like that massive long leader, all your lures don't swim as good either, because you've got more drag, it's um, mm. kind of mm. impairing a lot, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. But even with the FG not going through guides, it's still quite noisy, it's still got, um, like cuts down a lot, reduces a lot. A lot of our rods, unfortunately, we get from every company is designed mainly for America. And Americans don't do the, the not leader braid thing like we do. They run a lot of fluorocarbon straight through. There is no knot. So they, they use little tiny guides that really annoys me, some brands. So you'll have this 20 to 40 pound rod, you know, 10 to 15 kilo or whatever. And it's got micro guides on it, <laughs> nearly. And like, yeah, it's geez. like a four mil tip. Yeah, it's terrible. So you've got to try to get your leader and your braid and everything through four mil of clearance. It's just never yeah. going to happen. No. It's hard. So, yeah. Anyhow, it's really popular in our store for, uh, again, mackerel and dolphin fish and stuff like that. Um, they're expensive little suckers, but they, like anything that's good is expensive, I guess. <coughs> so it's about 28 bucks a pop or something like that, $27. But they just work really well. But you don't want a mackerel to bite it off. Yeah, even I wouldn't like that getting bitten off. Oops, it's all right, mate. Heads, <laughs> it's all good, mate. Do you want me to go get a food? Right? No, no, it's all yeah, good. It's all good. Yeah. I just wanted to show you something in the line before patrolling, and you can cover this. Um, there are lines out, I swear this all the time too. There are lines out now that are, uh, it's getting ridiculously thin, okay? So some of the newest brands, this is a Japanese monofilament. Uh, it's spilled in Indo, but it's a Japanese product. And um, this just blew us all away when we saw the statistics on how thin it is. And it's, we've been selling it for about two years. It has a massive cult following now in all sizes, and uh, it's very good. Um, and like 15 kilo in this, actually 24 kilo, I've got 24. 24 kilo in, in this brand, and it's not deer like some of the other brands, uh, is uh, the same thickness as any 15 kilo. So it enables you on a small reel to get a lot more line on your reel. So 15 kilos is like 10. So um, you can put on a, a little Torium 16 or a little reel, a little overhead, you know, 500 metres of 15 kilo, where before you'd only get 300 or 250 on, which is borderlining enough, but getting down there. Um, or if you get like a TLD 25 and you're getting done a few times, you might want to go out wide and maybe catch a striped marlin or a bigger marlin at spot X or whatever, and you, you need, because you're fishing 100 metres deep, you maybe need three or 400 metres of line, but you can never put 400 metres of 20, a 50 pound uh, line on a TLD 25 Shimano, right? It doesn't quite hold it. But now you can, you can put 600 metres on with this stuff. Don't just so, no, not really at all, no. Um, visually, it's good for you to see where it is. And, and some guys um, prefer to run different colours, so got four rods, two green, two orange, they get tangled up, they know which is what. But you've got four greens Fish tangled up, it's not very good. Just cut it off. <laughs> Fish-wise doesn't matter at all, no, not at all. Um, it, it relative. And same with braid, people worry about multicolour versus just green colour or whatever. Irrelative. Yeah. I don't think it's ever affected my fishing. The biggest thing is no. you always run a leader off the end anyway. So, and 99% yeah. of leaders are cleared. Downsized and enjoy it. Because it's quite hard. I mean, when I was a young guy, it was all pen 6 senators, which was heavy as hell. <laughs> the drag was like, mm, 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 mm. and it was only about probably six kilo locked up with the spanner. And, um, and also the line was like rope. So 50 pound back in those days would be probably 130 pound these days. Go back 25, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And, and the problem those days was, and people say to us now, you know, why do you have it so full? But when you drop out 100 metres, 150 metres, because it's so thin, it only drops down maybe 6 mil on the spool, 8 mil on the spool. Go back back in time, and it has... Yeah, if you had, if you had 150 metres out, you had half the spool out, and then if you had someone that didn't know what they were doing and they weren't using their thumb, they just wind it back on, and it built up in the middle like that. <laughs> And they got stuck and they go, oh, the reel's broken, you know, but they can't go anymore. Um, that was the problem you have. But because the line's so thin these days, it, it eliminates that problem. And with braid, it's next level again. Like you have 100 metres of braid out, it's probably about three mil off the spool. 
A lot of reels we spool up and put 300 metres of braid on, say a TLE 25, and we put 300 metres of, of um, say 50 pound braid on one. Um, we've got to actually back it up to about five mil from the top of the spool to put 300 metres on top of it because it's so thin. Okay. That's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> you see these guys going, I just think, oh. They come from nowhere. <laughs> they got good eyes. <laughs> so, um, my suggestion is that at this time of year, I always have two or three spin rods set up with metals on them or stick baits, or stick baits. and that's my go to. If I'm trawling and I see that action somewhere, or one of my mates pulls his phones, um, I'm out of there. I've got the lines up really quick, <clears throat> so do I. Get them. Don't just put them in rod holes because right? when you get there, first thing you do is the car so you hit the tip of the rod. And, Get them out of the way. It's worth the exercise with extra two minutes. Oh, one minute probably. Yeah. The star in front of the boat or something up in the rocket launcher. Yeah. So when you get there, you're already gassed and there's nothing in your way at all. Okay? So you need to make sure of that. But it's great fun casting. It's probably the best buzz out of mackerel fishing. Yeah. <coughs> Scream. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the other thing that we, we do with mackerel fishing is, and, and I and I love casting with my little flat end boss, like a two and a half thousand size reel on a you know, four to six kilo spin stick, seven foot, and I'm trawling, I'm casting these little fellas. I've been, I'm not talking about bait fishing tonight, but when you do bait fish and chop up your burl in their anchor, say they're mermaid or, or gravel patch or palmy, or at the front here, um, you should be casting a burly trial all the time. So either chopping up early or you cast it. It's one of the two, you don't stop. And you get so many fish in your burly trial. Out of the diamond reef here later in the year, uh, or, sorry, early the year next year, um, at the later in the season, around about sort of late March, April, after the second closure <laughs> time, um, is when you get a lot of uh, a lot of yellowfin. They're, they're here already, but that's when they normally show up. It's sort of April. And, um, and they're always in the belly trial as a, as a Spanish and the odd spotty, but definitely Spanish.